Hello, good morning, everyone. Thank you so much for tuning in to Devotions today. And I want to talk to you on a really simple subject of patience. And of course, patience is just the, the ability to be able to tolerate waiting or, or tolerate a delay without getting angry or upset about it. And of course, patience is, is a bit of a skill to have as a human being. And I, I think some people, um, based on personality, patience is a little easier for some people than others. Now, I have people a lot of times ask me, like, how are you so patient? Now, the thing is, when, when I examine myself, I don't always think I'm actually patient. And I can be really patient depending on the circumstance with the help of the Holy Ghost. Now, if someone if, if we're talking about a spiritual thing and, and somebody's um, struggling with something and they're trying to work through it and it's taking some time or, you know, they're growing uh, maybe a little bit slower than uh, they would like to or that you would like to see them grow, I'm able to be quite patient in that type of scenario. But put me kind of in a natural uh, natural situation that's very common if I'm running late for a meeting, something to that nature, and Nick has the bad idea of, oh, hey, I'm driving by a Starbucks. Maybe I could just whiz through the drive through really quick, grab a coffee, because I'm feeling a little tired, and then I'll continue on to the meeting. And then you get into the middle of that drive through drive through win where you can't really back up and you can't move forward. You're trapped, and you're basically committed to getting that coffee. And for some reason, a couple cars ahead of you is taking a very long time to get their order. Um, I'm definitely much less patient in that type of scenario. Now, a lot of the anxiety that I'll, I would be feeling in that moment uh, would be inwardly. I'm probably not going to be, you know, slamming on the horn and yelling out my window or anything like that. Um, but at the same time, I'm not feeling all that patient. Now, patience is definitely something that's talked about. In the Bible, of course, it's a it's a virtue. It's something that, as Christians, that we should definitely seek to have, and and that should be produced in our life by the help of the Holy Spirit. And I want to start this morning in Isaiah chapter forty, verse thirty one. It says, "But those who wait on the Lord shall renew their strength. They shall mount up with wings as eagles. They shall run and not be weary. They shall walk." and not faint. This is a super common passage of scripture. You see it in so many places on, on walls, on, on plaques, on different things as a reminder for people that if they're able to wait on the Lord, that he's going to give them the strength that they need to get out of their situation. And there, there's so much imagery in this scripture. Number one, of course, um, the key here, the key element is that it says to wait. Now there's there's so many things that we would love to see just happen overnight. In my life, there's tons of things that, that maybe I'm waiting for, and I'm sure that you could attest to the same thing. You're waiting for some things in life and um, you don't feel like waiting any longer. You just want it to kind of happen. And you know, there's tons of situations in life where you're going to feel that way. For instance, if you get yourself into kind of a dark uh, area of life and it's not very pleasant, you don't feel very happy. Now you're going to want to get out of that as quickly as possible, but sometimes it just takes longer than we would like it or longer than we would expect it. So in, in those moments we might be praying, okay, God, let's, uh, let's move on. Let's get yeah, this COVID-19 for instance. It's like, okay, can we just kind of move past this pandemic and get back to normal. And of course, it takes a lot of patience to be able to wait and to trust God. But that's the key in this scripture. If we wait, and we're not just waiting for anyone or anything, we're waiting on the Lord. Those who wait on the Lord, your your strength's going to be renewed. You're going to mount up with wings as eagles. You're going to run and not be weary. 
and walk and not faint. Now, you're going to have a lot of endurance when you're able to wait on the Lord. Now, it seems a little bit counterproductive in a sense because you're waiting. And when you think of waiting or being patient, it's kind of being like, Max, relax. You're not really moving. You're not showing that you're angry or upset. You're just kind of on pause. And that's what it feels like sometimes when we're we're waiting on the Lord. So it's like, you know, I, I want to be able to run here. I want to be able to fly out of this situation. But we basically, in a sense, do the opposite and allow God to do the work for us. We wait on him. We trust on him. We put our faith in him and just allow him to pick us up out of the situation. The next scripture that I want to read is Psalms 46 verse 10. It says, be still and know that I am God. I will be exalted among the nations. I will be exalted in the earth. Now, at the end of the day, no matter what takes place in the world around us, God will be exalted. He's God and he is God alone. So it's very helpful for us as Christians once in a while to do exactly what this scripture is saying. Now, we like to take things by the horn sometimes and we just want to um, kind of get through a situation the way that we, we think is best. And we would like to just plow through it with all of our natural ability. But usually when we, we do that, we end up making more of a mess of things. So we have to once in a while just step back. And I, when I read the scripture, I just imagine like stepping back, thinking, contemplating, be still and know. Just rest assured, just understand, just no, remember in your mind who God is. And of course, it's God speaking in this scripture. Be still and know that I am God. I'll be exalted among the nations. I'll be exalted in the earth. Now you see all these nations that are kind of backsliding. Or there's, a, there's, of course, a great falling away from the things of God. But at the end of the day, every nation, God's going to be exalted among the nations, among the, the peoples, the, the races of the world going to be exalted in the earth so keep that keep that in your mind and it and it will help you to be able to to wait through your stressful situations and wait through all of what's happened in the world and, and just be still in the middle of chaos know that god is still god first corinthians 13 and verse 4 of course this is like the love chapter in in verse 4 of first corinthians chapter 13 it says, love suffers long and is kind. So when you love someone or, or something, the, the whole thing about patience and waiting is like you're, you're giving whoever or whatever the opportunity to kind of turn themselves around. Or, um, you know, God, God, of course, he's very long suffering towards us. Um, we, we were all sinners at some point and he was waiting for us to turn around and to come to him and for some of us it may have taken longer than others but god is so patient he's so kind he's so so loving and, and that's the powerful thing about love is when we have the the love of jesus christ in us and working through us then you know when maybe when people are, are being hard on us or or when someone's frustrating you or or hating on you or whatever the case may be, you can suffer for a long time because you know you're extending love and of course we can't change people, but there's always a hope that they will change. And that's the way of course that God works for, for all of humankind is to all of mankind is to just wait. He's not going to force a relationship on anyone, but he's extending that offer out saying, Hey, look, um, I, I made a way out of this mess. I made a way out of darkness. You can have eternal life. You can have a relationship with me, but you have to initiate the process, right? Jesus, he already died on the cross. He already did everything. He, he blazed a trail for us to be able to, to join in communion with him, but he's, he's not going to force us to do that, right? He's, He's suffering for a long time, in many cases, just waiting for his kids to come home. Last scripture I want to look at this morning is Galatians 5, verse 22. And this is talking about the fruit of the Spirit or what we produce when the Spirit of God lives inside of us. It says, but the fruit of the Spirit is love, joy, peace, 
long-suffering, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, self-control. Against such there is no law. So, of course, all of these virtues, all of this fruit that, that comes out of the life of, of a person that is filled with the Spirit, all of it is very essential and very important. And, you know, I like to evaluate myself sometimes as, as a Christian and, and make sure that I'm extending these kinds of things to, to other people. And, am I loving to other people? And, and am I showing joy, right? I don't want to be a, a dimmy downer all like, you know, obviously we can struggle. We can struggle with, with depression. We can struggle with different things that kind of eat away at joy. But the joy of the Lord is also our strength, right? So God's joy is going to help us to get out of the miry clay. And I think that we should be joyful as Christians, even in bad circumstances, that we do our very best to tap into the Spirit of God, to stir that up in us so we feel the joy of the Lord, even when it's not really present naturally. Peace. Am I, am I showing peace? Am I a peacemaker? Am I trying to bring peace instead of conflict and chaos? And here it is, long-suffering. So 1 Corinthians 13, 4, it says, Love suffers long. It literally says it that way. And in Galatians 5, verse 22, it says long suffering. And again, it's just that concept of being able to suffer for a long time or to be patient, just to, to wait. So are we being patient with other people? Are we, are we showing that, that, that kindness? And that's another one here. Kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, self-control. Because there's, there's no law. There's, without these things, there's, there's, you know, really nothing as far as, you know, being, being a, a Christian or, or we wouldn't be any different than the rest of the world if we didn't show these things in our life. And of course, uh, this morning, my, my focus is on, on patience. And I just want to encourage you out there. Maybe, maybe you've been struggling recently because you're waiting for something to happen. It's just not happening. And, and you could be getting angry, maybe or, or frustrated at the very least with God or with someone else in your life. And, and you just kind of want things to, to, to move forward and you want to see some progress, but you just don't feel like waiting anymore. But as these, these scriptures we read this morning, I assure you that waiting on God is worth it. Waiting on God is, is of course the biblical method to, to dealing with, situations that are that are taking a long time just be patient and just show god hey you know what i i'm not i'm not even going to get try to control this anymore i i can't control this this is way out of my control whatever your situation is in god's due timing if you put your trust in him if you're if you're praying about it if you're staying faithful to him then it will happen it will come to pass God is faithful, and of course, sometimes the trick is for us to be faithful in the process and just wait on Him and trust on Him, trust in Him that He is going to do what only He can do. Just wait this morning, be patient, and God bless you today in Jesus' name.